at the time was known as the Detroit of Japan. <laughs> That's back when Detroit was Detroit. <laughs> but uh, it, it was worthy of bombing at that, at that time. When they got to Kokur, they, I told you they waited 35 minutes longer than they should have to rendezvous with their airplanes. So when they got to Kokur, the weather which had been reported good there had turned sour. Smoke from a previous bombing the night before was drifting over the city and they could not see the bomb. Kermit B. Hand made four passes at the city, could not see the bomb, so they decided to go on to uh, uh, Nagasaki and drop the bomb there. So the reason Kokura was saved was bad weather, essentially, over the, over the target. I'll also throw in here, thank you for your service. My late father, also, late father also served and um, was very reluctant to talk about anything that he actually did during the war. This is really a, a, a enjoyable experience for me to hear someone who was in a position to do so. And so I'm going to ask the question kind of more on a, a, a personal side of things. So you're in your mid-20s. You've done something that has changed the course of history. You actually already know that it's changed the course of history. What do you do for an encore? How does that affect the rest of your life when you already know that you've, you've already done something that mattered more than most people ever come within 100 miles of? How did that affect the rest of your life? What you try to do is go out and feed your family. <laughs> like, like, you know, you have to be it's funny you should ask because I'm a child of the Depression. And I think all people my age are. We live an entirely different style of life from what people have lived since, or certainly from what people are living now. You know, when I go out and I talk to the high school classes, uh, college, junior college classes, and I tell the kids that we didn't have a telephone in our home. And that sort of thing. If we wanted to use a phone, we went across and used one of our neighbors or something of that type. Um, television. What was television? We didn't have things. First television I saw had a round screen on it for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. And everything of that. We had nothing that you have now. And so basically, I'm just trying to keep up with the world. That's what they basically what the mouse said. <laughs> And I, like, I'm trying to learn from my grandchildren, too. <laughs> I'm sitting down at the beach the other day, and my grandson's in there, and he says, Granddad, what are you doing with that old cell phone? <laughs> and and, and, and he, he, pulls, he pulls his out of his pocket, and he says, Look here, all the things you can do on mine. I says, Jamie, it would take me a year to learn all that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know that you did something, but if you let it go to your head, that's what affects you. That's what happened to uh, Bob, Bob Lewis, for example. Uh, some of the guys in the group really thought the world owed them something for dropping them all. I never felt that way. And I've lived a much happier life as well.